you come? Why are you here crouching at my altars? I look around and I see our city heavy with clouds of incense. So I've come myself, I, the Oedipus, known to everyone. Come, old man, old priest of Zeus, speak for them all. Your age gives you that right. I know, I see their hearts are heavy with fear. It's why I've come, for there is nothing I won't do, nothing to help them. My heart isn't made of stone. How could it be? These are mine. My people groaning and suffering here at my feet. Oedipus, ruler of Thebes, you see before you, prostrate your altars, people of all ages. And here, youths, chosen from those not married, our dearest treasure. But we are not all, my lord, there are many more. You only have to look, my lord, to see. Our trees are blighted in the bud, herds of sheep, cattle, and goats wither, collapse in the fields. Our women give birth to stillborn things. And we, we stagger and stumble, weak with hunger, gasping for air, for breath, while the cruel god of fever, searing fever, swoops down upon us, cutting, slashing, seizing our city, emptying houses, hateful plague. My king, we haven't come because we think of you as a god. No, we know you to be a man and only a man, a man well practiced in the ways of life and living as well as wise in the ways of God. You freed us from that harsh singer, the Sphinx, and cut the cord that bound us to a tribute we paid to her. Not one of us gave you advice, or instructed you, or helped in any way. Yet you triumphed. A God was with you, they say. We know that. You saved our lives that day. So now, Oedipus, we turn against you, for only the greatest of men can lead us to a cure. You, a man tested by experience, Man who wields power, fuse action and thought, and make us well. Raise up, suffering thieves. Raise us to our feet again, Oedipus. Raise our city high as you did once. Oh, children, how I pity you. I know the need that brings you here. Believe me, I know how sick you all are. And yet, of all of you, none is sicker than I. The pain that you suffer strikes each of you alone, and yet my heart grieves for all of you, and for the city, and for myself. I have sent my wife's brother Creon to Apollo's shrine in Delphi, instructing him to learn from the Pythian oracles what prayers or rituals I can offer to help me save Thebes. Now where could he be? He's been gone for too long now. It, it troubles me. But... Once he arrives, I would be a traitor if I failed to carry out what the god reveals. Well spoken. And just in time, he's here. Lord Apollo, let him come with news as bright as the gleam in his eyes. The Creon, what news has Apollo sent us? News that we should find hopeful. Troubles hard to bear, he says are bearable, if all goes well. Yes, but I don't understand. What does it mean? I've heard riddles. What do we do? In front of the people. Now, we can go inside. No, let the city hear. My people mean more to me than my life. Then here are the God's words, clear beyond doubt. Apollo commands that we are to drive from Thebes an ancient pollution that stains everything and everyone. A pollution that we've nourished for many years, that eats at our very core. We must purge it away. Pollution. What are you saying? How can we purify Thebes? Banishment or blood. Blood for blood. For bloodshed sent this plague storm on our city. And who is the man the gods condemn? Before you arrived and set our city on course and took up power, Laios ruled in Thebes. I know. I've heard. I, I never met him. Laios was murdered. Apollo commands us now, and very clearly too, to avenge those men, whoever they are. But where? Where are they, and how do we find clues to a crime so old? Apollo says here, in Thebes, what we pursue will be caught. Where was Laios murdered? In his palace? Out of the country? He said he was going to Delphi. He never returned. Was no one with him? 
no messenger, no one to tell what happened? Or were there no one witnesses? were killed. And he fled in panic. He remembered only one thing for certain. And? One clue can lead to others. He said that he was killed not by one man, but by a marauding horde of bandits. Bandits? Kill a king? How would they dare? Unless... Unless they were paid in Theban gold. We suspected as much, but Laos was dead. We had no king to help us in our distress. Your king, killed. Your throne, empty. And you failed to uncover every shred of evidence? The riddling song of the Sphinx persuaded us otherwise. It seemed to tell us to deal not with the past, but with the present, with our more immediate troubles. Then, then I will begin again and bring truth to light. It was good of the gods and of you, Creon, to rise again in defense of the dead man. And yet, in defending Laios, I won't be acting as to defend some distant friend, but for my own sake. For whatever man killed him, killed Laios, you might turn his hands against me. In defending Laios, I defend myself. Call the people of Thebes to assembly. Tell them that I will do everything possible to help. And if the god wills, luck will triumph. If not, well then we are all doomed. May Apollo send these oracles, come himself to deliver us from this plague. How sweet is the message of Zeus. What word do you bring me from Delphi, from Pytho's gold-rich temple? What word do you bring here to Thebes? What do you ask me? What is your will? What new doom do you bring upon me? Or is it renewed with the circling of years? Raise up your voice, immortal daughter, child of golden hope. Give us hope. Athena, first I summon you, daughter of Zeus, eternal maiden, and then your sister, throned in the market, splendid Artemis, land's guardian, and Apollo, the archer of the unfailing aim, triple defenders against doom, appear, appear. rise before me, let me see you. You who shielded me once, appear. You who averted my ruin, appear. You who defended my city, appear. Gods who banish the fires of doom, hear me. You, the triple defenders of Thebes, help, help me. me.
have heard your prayers. Now listen to me. I am moved by your plight. Now here's my answer, but you must do your part too. Until today, I knew nothing of this tale. I was a stranger here, a stranger to the crime as to the city, arriving only after your king's death, made a Theban only then. But hear me out. There is one among you who knows who killed Laios. Who is he? I ask you to tell me now. Let him speak and clear himself of the charge. I assure him he will not be harmed. He will not go stumbling into exile, but leave the land in good and proper health. If anyone knows the murderer to be a stranger, a foreigner from an alien land, then let him speak, for he will have a reward as well as my gratitude. If, however, you keep your silence, refusing to speak in hope of shielding yourself or a friend or a loved one from my edict, then hear this. I command every citizen of the land to give no shelter or word to him, whoever he may be. Drive him out of every house, out of every hearth. Drive him out of the land, out of Thebes, for he is our corruption, our pollution, and our disease. And I, as Apollo's warrior, take up arms now in defense of the dead man. As for the murderer, whether he acted alone, single and unknown, or one of many, I pray that his evil life be ground down to miserable and wretched days. And as for me, if I have given shelter or shared my hearth knowingly with this man, then may the same curse turn back to haunt me. These are my orders. And he was your king who died, first among men. But now, holding the power that he once held and his marital bed and wife, a wife who now bears me children, children that might have been his had chance not denied him a son. I say this, I will take up his cause as son to father and vow not to give up the fight till the hand that murdered Laios is brought to light. And to those who will not listen, who refuse to help, may the gods blight your fields till you die of hunger and may they infect the wombs of your wives with stony barrenness. As for you, people of Thebes, loyal citizens who support me in this, may justice, our own ally, and all the gods stand by and protect us in this battle still to come. In light of your curse, my lord, I can only say that I am not the murderer, nor can I point to the one who is. But Apollo ordered the search. Apollo should tell us how to properly find him. A man force a god to speak. Then may I suggest the next best thing? Even if it's a third, let's hear it. The prophet, Tiresias. Sir, next to Apollo, he has the keenest sight where truth is concerned. We could learn from him. Tiresias, yes, on Creon's advice, I've sent for him already. Twice, in fact. Now where could he be? Here is the only man who knows, the holy, inspired prophet. God's truth lives bright as day in his dark eyes. Tiresias, seer who knows all things, master of omens earthly and divine, of things that can be learned and of things mysterious. Though your eyes are blind, you know and see the plague that sears our city. You alone, my lord, can save us. Share your gifts now, old man, your powers of divination. Read the flights of birds, or else use other means. But spare us nothing, nothing. Rescue us. Care for yourself, for the city, for me. Pull us from this danger the dead man brings upon us. There can be no nobler act than for a man to use every means in helping others. How terrible truth can be 
when all it brings to the one who knows is pain. I knew this once. I knew it well. But I forgot. I drove it out. No, I should never have come. Never have come? Why so bleak, so despairing? Let me go home. You will bear your fate. I will bear mine. It is better this way. Who are you to say such things to Thebes that gave you life? Now tell us what you know. No, nothing. Be careful. Your own words are not, not, not as well aimed as you may think. You're blind, all of you. No and not tell? Are you set on betraying Thebes? You could inflame a stone to anger. You won't talk? Well, I say talk. You rant against my temper. You don't know the one you live with. Who could listen to your insults and not be angry? You shame your city. Speech or silence. What will be, will be. If what will be, will be, then tell me. No! Nothing! Rage on. I have nothing to say. And rage I will. For I will speak, yes, and in anger too. All I suspect, hear me now. I say that you helped plot the death of Laios. <laughs> Plotted it in every way you could, even though your hand never struck a blow. Oh, and if you had eyes, I would say you even did that too. <laughs> then take responsibility for your own words and carry out your edict to the letter. Never to speak another word to me or to anyone here in Thebes. For you yourself are this land's curse. You are this land's corruption. You, the plague is you. <laughs> oh, and you really think to get by with this? I have already. My strength is truth. Who taught you this, your prophet's craft? You, in forcing me to speak. Then say it again so I'll understand. Did I make no sense? Are you testing me now? Not so I know it clearly again! You! You are the murderer you're hunting. I said that you were living a life of shame with those who are closest to you, and yet you are blind, blind to the evil! <laughs> you will pay for this old man. It is you who are blind, and soon all men will curse you as you curse me. Protected by darkness, you can never harm me or any other man with sight. Are these inventions yours, or are they Creon's? Creon is no threat. Your doom is yourself. <laughs> Wealth! Oh, kingship! <clears throat> <laughs> what envy is stored up against you here? If Creon, loyal Creon, trusted friend, plots in secret to steal my throne, a throne not sought by me, but offered to me by Thebes in gratitude. Tell me, friend Tiresias, when was your skill as a prophet ever proved? Not when the raucous sphinx chanted her spells of death and destruction. Why were you silent then? Where were your words to liberate this city? Where were you and your birds of prophecy? Where were the gods for all of that? Mm. Then I came along, I, Poor, ignorant Oedipus. No birds to give my wisdom flight, only thought. And this, oh, this is the man you seek to overthrow? To stand secure beside King Creon's throne? He spoke in anger, as you did, and that we don't need. Our task is how to fulfill the god's oracle. You may be king, Oedipus, but I am your equal. In one respect at least, the right to speak. I belong to Apollo, and I say what I please. You mocked me, mocked my blindness. You slandered me. So now I say to you who still have eyes, eyes that are blind to the wretchedness of your life, <gasps> uh, uh, that 
that you do not know in whose house it is you live, that you do not know with whom you share that house, that you do not know your origins. Who are your parents? Do you know? Do you know the evil you have done? Done to your own, done to your family. The two broke curse of your father and your mother, who went to whip you out of this land. Whip you and stomp you down with its deadly stride. Whip you out of babes! Oh! And your eyes. Your eyes and how sedacious stare into darkness. Stare into endless night. And your crowns terrible in their sound. Well, I go from every valley, from every gully and stone. From every blind path of the fire. I shake them with the sound when you have learned the meaning of your marriage! Terrify <gasps> <sighs> <sighs> me, then! Curse my words! Words that stream from Apollo. <sighs> Insult Creon. But no man will ever know greater sorrow, greater pain and defeat, and be ground down as the common dust, as will you. I won't hear this. Not from this man. Damn you! Out of my sight! Leave my palace now! Would I be here if you hadn't asked of me? Had I known you would talk such fool's drivel, I would never have brought you here. A fool to you, perhaps, but not to your parents. Wait. W wait, stop! <laughs> Who are my parents? Today, you were born. Today will destroy you. Damn your riddles. Are they your wisdom? Ah, but aren't you the master of riddles? Mock me. You'll soon find it's true. That same luck has brought you your ruin. <laughs> and if it saved the city, then I don't care. I will leave you then. Go. Good riddance. I will go once I have said what I came to say. And no scowls or threats of yours will frighten me. The man you have looked for all this time, the man you have cursed and threatened with death, the murderer of Laios, that man is here, here in Thebes. He who now has eyes shall be blind. He who now has wealth shall be a beggar. He will go tapping his stick with every step along foreign roads, knowing himself brother to his own children, husband and son to her who gave him birth. So were the field his father plowed, his own father's murderer. Go inside now and think it out. If you find that I have lied, then say that the blind old prophet has no understanding.
the accusations King Oedipus makes against me. And I've come in haste, because I'm not a man to endure such indignity. This outrage to my name is no small matter. There's no more grievous charge, none more heinous than this, to be damned by my own city, by you, and those closest to me as a traitor? He spoke from anger, not from careful thought. And said that I persuaded the prophet to lie? Yes, but why I don't know. Did he look you straight in the eye? Was his mind steady? I can't say. I don't judge the deeds of great men. But here he is now. You! Oh, Creon! You have the gall to come here. You, who sought to steal my throne, steal my power, like a bandit. Oh, by the gods, Creon, did you think me a fool, a coward, blind to your plots against me? Did you think that I had no eyes to see your stealthy moves? And that I would not, without one moment's pause, take up arms against them in my own defense? What a fool you are, Creon. What a fool you are! Finished? Then listen to me. I've listened to you. And judge on the facts. Oh, you have such a way with words, Creon. But how do I listen to a known enemy? First things first, listen for a change. Tell me what this wrong is you say I have done you. Did you or did you not convince me to send for that pious fraud of a prophet? I did, yes, and I would do it again. And how long ago was it that Laios... That Laios what? I don't understand. Vanished, struck down in his tracks, murdered... Years, many long years ago. And you never hunted the king's killer? We did, but came away with nothing. Then why did your prophet accuse me then? When I don't know, I prefer to keep silent. No, but this you'd say if you were honest. And what would that be? If I know, I'll tell. If you and he hadn't schemed together, well, then you would have never said that I murdered Laios. If this is what he said, then who would know better than you? But now it's my turn to question. Ask away. But I am not a murderer. Very well. Is my sister your wife? Now there's a fact I can't deny. And you rule together, equal in power? Everything she wants, she has. And I am the third, where all of us are equal. And that is where you are proven a traitorous friend. Not if you see it as I do, rationally. Why would a man in his right mind ever choose the distressing cares of kingship over untroubled sleep? Especially if he has equal power and rank. As it is, I have everything from you. My life is free. I live unburdened by the demands put upon kingship. But if I were king, I should be bound to act as a king must act, against his will and pleasure. Why give up comfort for worry? No sane mind is treasonous. Test me, why don't you? Go to the Pythia at Delphi. Ask the goddess if I reported correctly. And if I didn't, if I'm found to be in league with the prophet plotting treason, then have me executed. But not on your vote only, on mine as well. Good advice for a careful man. Hasty judgment is often dangerous. Hasty conspiracy is hastily met. If I delay, he wins, I lose. What do you want? Say it, banishment? <laughs> banishment, no. It's your head that I want. You refuse to believe. You refuse to yield. You don't persuade me. You're worthy of belief. Quite frankly, I think you've just lost your wits. In my interests, yes. And what about mine? But you're a traitor. What if you're wrong? But I must rule. When your rule is evil, think of the city. It's my city too. Please, my lords, enough. Look, Yocasta, just in time. Let her end this. Oh, what fools you are. What's all this quarreling in public? Aren't you ashamed? Stirring up private matters when Thebes is sick to death? Come inside now, and you, Creon, go home. Why make something out of nothing? Nothing? Sister, your husband plans one of two things, either to have me exiled or to have my head. It's true. I caught him plotting against me. No. If I'm found guilty of anything, I'll die accursed and consider it a blessing. Oedipus, I beg of you, believe him. In the God's name, respect his oath. Respect me and respect your people. I, I beg, beg you, you, my king, be guided, consent. Concede, and if I do, what? He was never a man to be despised. He is strong in his oath. You should respect him. Do you know what you're asking? I know. Then tell me. A friend who binds himself to a curse should never be charged without proof. In asking this, you ask my death or exile from Thebes. No, by the god of the sun, by the god Apollo, destroy me if ever I thought such a thought. The land is racked, wasted, a torture, 
a pain to my soul. Don't add to my misery troubles that spring from you too. He's free, free then. And if I must let me die or end my life dishonored, exiled far from Thebes, your pitiful words move me, not him. He will take my hatred with him wherever he goes. As fierce as you rage, natures like yours torment themselves the most. Leave me. Get out. Yes, I'll go. But you know nothing. Nothing. Our people saved me. Why do you hesitate? Lead him back to the palace. Yes, but tell me first what happened. Words were spoken. Words on both sides? Yes. Tell me. This land has suffered enough. End it where they left it. Here is where your thoughts have led. You are wise, and yet you persuade me to blunt my anger. Oedipus, king, I have said not once, but many times, and say it again. Take the helm, and lead us once again from misfortune. Oedipus, my lord, please tell me what is it? Whatever can have put you in such a rage? Yes, I'll tell you, Yocasta, because I trust you more than I trust those people. It's, it's Creon, Creon who raises plots against me. Then tell me how it started and be clear. He tells me to my face that I murdered Laios, that's it. And how does he know this? Does he have facts or is it hearsay? Oh no, he sends it against me, that damnable prophet. Let's have no more of this, forget this now. Listen to me. No man born of woman has ever possessed the art of prophecy, and I can prove it by means of an experience. Long ago, an oracle came to Laios and said that he, Laios, would meet his death at the hands of a son yet born to us, his flesh and mine. And yet it is said that Laios met his death at the hands of foreign bandits where three roads meet. And as for the son I bore, that poor child, not three days had passed when Laios pierced his ankles, bound them together, and had him thrown onto a trackless mountain. So you see, it wasn't Apollo made the child kill his father. So much for prophets and their prophecies. Yocasta. Uh, just now, as you spoke, some terrible, shadowy memory chilled my heart. Why do you say that? I thought I heard you say that Laios was killed at a place where three roads meet. They said so then, they say so still. And where did this happen? In focus. When? How long ago? Shortly before you arrived in Thebes and were offered the throne. Oh! <sighs> Zeus! What terrible design have you plotted for me? What torments you so, my lord? Tell me! No! Tell me about Laios first, what he looked like, how old he was. Dark, his temples beginning to gray, his figure not unlike yours. Oh, God. Without knowing, I've cursed myself. You frighten me when you say such things. I fear that the blind prophet sees. How did he travel? Laios, that is, uh, a light escort or many guards, as befits a king. Five in all, one was a herald. Laios rode in a single wagon. It's all so clear, so suddenly. How do you know this? Who told you? A servant, the only survivor. Is this servant still with us? No. When he returned and saw you in power and Laios murdered, he came and he knelt and he touched my hand. He begged to be sent far from the city, to the country where shepherds tend our flocks. He was a slave, but I thought he had earned this of me and more. Uh, can he be brought back and quickly? Of course, easily. Why? <sighs> Dear Yocasta, I'm afraid I've said too much already. I must see him. He'll come. But now, my dear, haven't I the right to know what troubles you? Every right. And so you shall. My father was Polybus of Corinth. My mother, Merope, a Dorian. I was seen as first among men at home in Corinth, prince of the city. And then one night, during a banquet, a man who had drunk more than his fill shouted that I was not my father's son. This hurt me until one day, unknown to my parents, I went to Delphi. But Apollo, he refused to hear. He cheated me. Instead, he flung such detestable horrors, such hideous filth, saying that I was doomed to know my mother's bed and to breed children that no man could bear to look at and to kill my father, the father who had given me life. Knowing this, I fled from Corinth, swearing never to return again. All right, Yocasta, here's the truth. One day, 
as I was walking, I came to a place where three roads meet. Approaching me was a herald driving a colt-drawn chariot with an old man, as you described, seated inside on a bench. The driver, he tried first to force me off the road with brute strength, and I struck him back in anger. I struck him hard, too. And then as I passed the wagon, the old man, he struck at my head with a two-pronged goad. I hit him back. Oh, I hit him so hard with the staff in my hand that he tumbled back downward and lay face up in the road. No, I killed him then. I killed them all. <gasps> Dear Yocasta, if this stranger has any ties to Laios, then what man is more miserable than I? More hated by the gods, these, these hands have touched you. You, his wife, made love to you, the same hands that, that, that murdered Laios. Oh, bloodied hands, hands defiling his marriage. Am I not a seed of evil? Am I not the most unclean of men? I, who must be exiled from Thebes, and in my exile never see my parents again. If I were born the victim of some savage god, well then who could deny the evil of divinity itself? Dreadful as this is, my lord, don't lose hope. Wait to hear from the man who saw the murder. Yes, yes, my only hope, waiting. Waiting with hope to hear the shepherd. And what do you hope to hear when he arrives? Well, why, if his story and yours agree, why then I will have escaped disaster. Why do you say that? You said he used the word bandits. Laios was killed by bandits. But if he says one man, single-handed, well, then the full weight of evidence falls on me. Believe me, my dear, it's what he said. How can he go back on his word now? The murder of Laios can never be forced to fit the gods' prophecies. Apollo said quite plainly that Laios would die at the hand of my son. And he, poor, miserable creature, died before Laios. So much for prophecy. I will never again turn right or left and fear a prophecy or prophets. Yes, yes. But even so, send for the shepherd. I'll do it at once. Come, let's go in. and deliver us from pollution. For when we look at him, at Oedipus, our hearts quake with fear. We are like sailors lost at sea when their helmsman loses control. 
Friends, excuse me, could you help? I'm looking for the king's palace. Edificities, I mean. Or even better, the king himself. In that case, you have arrived, stranger. The king is inside, but here is his wife, mother of his children. I wish her well. And wish the same to her household, for she is your queen. The same to you for your courtesy, sir. But tell me, why have you come? What is your news? Oh, good news for your house and husband. Then tell me, and tell me who sent you. I come from Corinth. As for the news, it will give pleasure, but maybe some pain. Two-pronged news? What could that be? The people of Corinth are saying they want to make Oedipus their king. But Polybus, has he lost his throne? Oh, that he has. Death holds him in his grip. Dead? Dead? The father of Oedipus? If I'm lying, death take me too. <laughs> For offices of the gods, where are you now? Polybus, the man that Oedipus fled long ago in terror that he would kill him. That same Polybus is now destroyed by chance and not by him, not by Oedipus. Listen to this man, Oedipus, and then tell me what's become of Apollo's prophecies. Where is he from? What has he said? Corinth, with news of your father. News that Polybus is dead. Your father is dead. What is this, stranger? Tell me yourself. He's dead. Dead as dead can be, and that's a fact. <laughs> he died of illness. A oh, poor man. Yes, to be sure, and the weight of his years. <laughs> oh, 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 Yocasta! To think that we ever trembled at Pythos' oracles. But Polybus lies there. And with them he took deep into Hades those worthless oracles. Haven't I said this all along? Yes, but I was crippled with fear. You needn't think of it ever again. Not fear my mother? My mother's bed? Fear? Why? Why should a man fear why? When life is ruled by chance. There is nothing sure, nothing. Foresight is guesswork, nothing more. Live however you choose. Why be afraid of marriage with your mother? Many men have slept with their mothers in dreams. Life should be easy. Don't trouble your mind. Your words are well taken, Yocasta. Except my mother still lives, and I fear the living woman. Who is this woman? This wife you fear? Merope, old man, the wife of Polybus. <laughs> Merope? What's to fear there? Long ago, the prophecy came that I would sleep with my mother and shed my father's blood with these hands. This is why I left Corinth long ago, avoiding it all these years. And chance has been good. <laughs> and yet, there is no sweeter thing in life than to see the kindly faces of one's parents. And this is why you fled the city. To escape killing my father, old man. Well then, King, I'll save you from that. After all, I come in friendship. Do you service? Your fears are groundless. Groundless? When I was born their son? Polybus was no relation to you. Polybus not my father? No more than me. In that we're equals. But you're... you're nothing to me. He no more sighed you than I did. Then why did he call me son? Why? He got you once as a gift from me. And loved me so dearly from another's hands? His life was childless. He turned to you. You bought me. You found me. You must... I found you on the slopes of Kithiron. And why were you there? What took you up Shepherding, to... Shepherding, tending my flocks in the mountains. A wandering shepherd. You worked for hire. I was your savior that day, child. What did you save me from that day? Your ankles could tell the tale of that. Why mention such an ancient anguish? When I freed your feet, your ankles were pierced. Yes, the shameful mark I had from my cradle. Ah, the very thing that gave you your name. Swollen foot, Oedipus. Who did this to me? Mother? Father? I can't say. The man who gave you knew more. It wasn't you who found me? Not to be child, another shepherd. Who? Do you know him? Describe him to me. One of life's men, I think. The king who ruled here long ago. Yes, he did shepherding for him. Is he still alive? I must see him. It is these people here would know that best. Does anyone know the shepherd that he means? He is the shepherd that you asked to see. The queen would know that best. The man we have sent for, lady. 
He's the shepherd the old man speaks of? The shepherd? What? No, forget him. Don't even ask. His words mean nothing. What? Give up on a clue like this? Not shed light on the mystery of my birth? For God's love, no. Don't do it. Don't do it, Oedipus. If you care for your life, don't, don't. Give up the search. My anguish is enough. Oh, come, come. Be brave, Yocasta. Even if I were born a slave of slaves, your honor would never be tainted. <laughs> Listen, please, don't do this thing. No. I will know. You will never persuade me. Oedipus, my thoughts are always for you. Your thoughts have tormented me long enough. You are doomed. You must never know who you are. Go. One of you, bring the shepherd. The queen will bask in her honorable birth. Oh, oh you poor, miserable man. What more can I say? Nothing, nothing, ever, ever. Where has she run off to Oedipus? And in such bitter pain, something terrible may burst from this silence. Then let it burst. Let it come. However base my birth may be, I'm bound to see it face to face. I, <laughs> I am the child of chance, giver of good. I cannot be dishonored. Chance is my mother and the passing months my brothers. And they have seen me small and great in time. I will never be other than I am and fail to seek out the truth of my birth. <laughs> this man coming towards us, my guess would be that he's the one we have sent for. His age and the old man's agree. Yes, I know him, Laios man, the best servant a man could have. Let me ask you first, Corinthian, is this the man you spoke of? The same. You, old man, come here. No, look at me. Good, now answer. Were you once a servant of Laios? Yes, but born in the palace, not bought. And what kind of work did you do? Most of my life, tending sheep. And where did you pasture your herd? Cathiron, or the hills nearby. Did you ever meet this man out there? What was his job? What man is that? That man there! Have you ever met him? Me? Him? Not that I... No surprise there, my lord. But let me go to his memory a bit, and you'll remember. You remember Kithiron and his two herds and me with only one. We spent six months together in the hills, three whole seasons. Spring to autumn, he'd take his herds back to Lausfold and I mine back to Corinth. Isn't that so? True, but such a right long enough. time. And you gave me a child, a boy child to raise as my own. And if I did, why are you asking this? That child is this man here. Damn you, can't you hold your tongue? Stop this, old man. Do you hear me? It's you who deserves to be struck, not him. Humble master, what have I done? You refuse to answer about the boy. He knows nothing. He's wasting words. You will answer willingly or else by force. But why? What do you want? The child. Did you give it to him? I did. I wish I had died that day. You will if you don't tell the truth. Oh, please. I gave the child. And where did you find it? Yours? Another's? No, not mine. Given to me. A citizen's child? From which house? Master, no more questions, I beg you. 
You're a dead man if I ask again. The child was from the house of Laios. Slave born or one of his own. I'm on the verge of dreadful speech. And I of dreadful hearing. Now say it. The child was Laios' child. Your wife knows best how it happened. She gave it to you. My lord, she did. Why? A reason? T to kill it. No. There uh, were prophecies. What? That he would kill his parents. Then, then, then why did you give him to this old man? Pity for it, my lord. Pity. I thought he would take him away, far away to some other place, his own country. But what a fate he has saved him for. If you are the man he says, you are the most miserable of men. It's all come true. All of the prophecies. All in a burst of radiance. O oh, light, O oh, light of day, let me see you this one last time. I, Oedipus, damned, damned in my birth, damned in my marriage, damned in the blood that I shed with my own two hands. Prepare to hear and see such horrors whose weight will pull you down with grief. Horrors willed, not unwilled. Our greatest griefs are those we bring on ourselves. <laughs> 
Haven't we enough of grief? Enough of pain? What more can you add? Our royal lady, the queen is dead. <sighs> Unhappy lady, how? She killed herself. How fortunate you are, you didn't see it. That dreadful sight. But I saw, and I will tell you, having left us, she passed through the palace gate and rushed in a frenzy of passion straight to her room. I can't say for certain just how she died. For at that moment, Oedipus burst in a rage, calling for the double mother whore who had reaped two crops, him and his children. There, we saw her hanging, swaying in a mass of twisted cords, and saying this, a roar rose from his breast that broke our hearts. And then he slipped the news from around her neck, and in his arms, lowered her body down to the floor. And when, poor woman, she lay on the ground, so terrible a scene was played, I wish I didn't remember. He tore the two gold pins that fastened her dress, and seeing her there, raised high the pins, one in each end, and plunged them deep into his eyes, crying that they would never again see the misery of his fate, the horrors of his deeds. And as his shunting sword, his hands brought down grief after grief on his eyes, strike up a strike opening wide his list to welcome more, till his whole face streamed, not with drops, but with dark currents of gore that flows from his eye. Is there any rest for him now? The he's jolted over the gates, so all thieves can see him as he is. His father's murderer, and his mother's, I can't say it, the unholy word. But look, now you will see a sight to make his enemies weep. Again, again the pain. Your pain, sir, your pain, I understand. Still there, old friends, still there with the blind man. Only you to protect me. Your voices I know so clear, so clear that I can feel their comfort, though I am dark. What deed have you done, Lord? 
What deed, Oedipus, have you done to make your eyes wither? What divinity, what dark divinity, raised your hands to strike? I, only I, and I, only with my own two hands, raised the double pins to fall, to plunge into my eyes. Everywhere was horror. 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 Yes, yes, too true. true. Take me away, friends. Far away. A man destroyed utterly. Most cursed of men. Most loathed by the gods. Wretched in knowledge. Wretched in fortune. My friend. I wish I had never known you. I wish I had died. Died that day. Died never to have dragged myself and all of my loved ones down into misery. I too, Oedipus, would have wished the same. Then never, never, never would I have been my father's murderer. Never be known to Thebes as my mother's husband, a son of shame, polluter of my mother in my father's bed that birthed me in misery. Tell me, what evil is greater than the evil that lighted on Oedipus? How can I say that you were well counseled? Better to be dead than blind and living. No more counsel. No more. The punishment I laid on myself was just. It could not be better. By all the gods, take me away from Thebes. Far away. Hide me. Kill me. Throw me into the deep where you will never see me again. Creon is your successor in Thebes. He is the one to advise, to act upon your request. He's here. How could I speak to him? By what right? How could he ever trust me? I have wronged him so deeply. I see that now. I'm not here to mock you, Oedipus or to condemn whatever wrong you have done. Drive me away, Creon, far away, where no human voice will ever reach me. Cast me out, now! Still playing the king. Don't presume. What you achieved in life is over. Your power is dead. <laughs> 